In this video tutorial we're going to begin looking at heat exchangers and essentially what happens in a heat exchanger is a hot fluid gives up heat energy and a cold fluid gains that heat energy. So it's a relatively straightforward principle where we have a hot fluid transferring its energy to a cold fluid. Now in this first example we have oil as our hot fluid and that's giving up heat energy to water. Now there might be a number of different reasons why we want to do this. The first might be because we want to cool the oil and the second reason might be because we want to recover some of that heat energy in order to heat the water. But irrespective of our goals, the principles of heat transfer here are exactly the same. So in this example, we're going to assume that our heat exchange is 100% efficient. And what that means is that all of the energy given up by the hot fluid is gained by the cold fluid. And more specifically, what we're going to be referring to is the energy transfer per second, phi. So phi for our hot fluid is going to be set equal to phi for our cold fluid. Now hopefully you recall from earlier tutorials, the rate of heat flow phi can be calculated using the formula mass flow rate times specific heat capacity at constant pressure times change in temperature, T2 minus T1. So we have a couple of options here. We could either calculate the rate of heat transfer from the hot fluid and set that equal to the rate of heat transfer to the cold fluid. Or we can expand the formula for the rate of heat transfer on both the left and right hand sides of our equation. And that's how we're going to approach this question. So we have various data for our hot fluid, including its mass flow rate, its specific heat capacity, and its two different temperature values. And for our cold fluid, or for our water, we have the specific heat capacity. We also have the inlet and outlet temperatures and what we want to know is the mass flow rate of water in order to achieve that heat transfer rate. So returning to our formula and expanding, on the left hand side we have the mass flow rate of the hot fluid. Well in this case, that's represented by the mass flow rate of the oil. Next we have the specific heat capacity of the hot fluid, or the specific heat capacity of the oil. And then we have the change in temperature, delta T, again for our oil. On the right hand side, we have the mass flow rate of our cold fluid. Well, the mass flow rate of the cold fluid is the thing we're trying to find, the mass flow rate of the water. Next, we have the specific heat capacity of the water. And finally, we have the change in temperature for the water. So next, we can plug in some values because we know that the mass flow rate of the oil is 0.25 kilograms per second. We know that the specific heat capacity is 2150. And we have a change in temperature from 75 degrees down to 50 degrees. So therefore the change in temperature is 25 degrees. On the right hand side, we have the thing we're trying to find, mass flow rate of the water, times the specific heat capacity of the water, 4200, times the change in temperature of the water. Well, the water is going from 15 degrees to 35 degrees C. So therefore, the change in temperature of the water is 20 degrees C. Next, we're going to simplify our left and right hand sides. And our left hand side becomes 13,437.5. And that's going to equal the mass flow rate of our water times 84,000. Now it is worth mentioning at this stage, this value here of 13,437.5 is the rate of heat transfer from our hot fluid in watts. Now as we've said this heat exchange is 100% efficient, the rate of heat gained by our cold fluid is also going to be 13,437.5. If we applied an efficiency or an effectiveness of this heat exchanger, then not all of that heat energy would make it into our water. So we would have to adjust our calculations accordingly. However, in this case, in order to get the mass flow rate of water on its own, all we need to do is take our 13,437.5 and divide it by 84,000, which gives us a mass flow rate of the water equal to 0 0.160 kilograms per second, accurate to three decimal places. Now we're going to carry out another calculation, except we're going to change the context of this question slightly. 
and this time we're going to adjust the outlet temperature of the oil. So we're assuming that the temperature of the oil exiting the heat exchanger needs to be reduced. And what we're going to do from there is we're going to calculate the corresponding outlet temperature for our water. So let's adjust those values and clear some space. OK, so once again we have some information for our hot fluid and we have some information for our cold fluid. And we've made an adjustment. We've said that now we want the oil or the hot fluid's temperature to be reduced to 42 degrees Celsius instead of 50 degrees Celsius. Therefore, if we're reducing the temperature of the hot fluid further, we're going to expect the outlet temperature of the cold fluid to increase. So previously it was 35 degrees Celsius, we're going to expect that value to go up because we're extracting more heat energy from our hot fluid. Now I'm just going to make a slight adjustment to our formula. At the moment we have thigh hot equals thigh cold, but we're going to be a little bit more specific. What we're going to be saying is that minus thigh hot equals thigh cold. The reason we need to make that adjustment is because our hot fluid is losing energy, which is negative rate of heat transfer, and our cold fluid is gaining heat energy, which is positive. Now by applying this sign convention, we can be absolutely clear that the hot fluid is losing energy and the cold fluid is gaining energy. And that's going to help us to correctly evaluate our changes in temperature within the heat exchanger. So once again, we can evaluate the rate of heat transfer from our hot fluid. We have minus, applying our minus sign. Inside the brackets, we have the mass flow rate of the oil. 0.25 times the specific heat capacity of the oil, 2150, times the temperature change of the oil. Now referring back to our original formula, we have T2 minus T1. T2 is the outlet temperature and T1 is the inlet temperature. So our hot oil is exiting the heat exchanger at 42 degrees. So T2 is 42 and it's entering the heat exchanger at 75 degrees. Now once again we can apply our formula on the right hand side. This time we already know the mass flow rate of our cold fluid or our water and we've calculated that to be 0 0.160. We also know its specific heat capacity 4200 and we also know the temperature of the water entering the heat exchanger. What we don't yet know, or what we want to calculate, is the temperature of the water exiting the heat exchanger. So T2 is our unknown, and T1 is 15 degrees C. So next, we can simplify our left-hand side, noting that we have a minus sign outside the bracket. So running our left-hand side through the calculator gives us a rate of heat transfer equal to 17,737. 0.5 and simplifying our right hand side we get 672 T2 minus 15. Okay so as we can see here the rate of heat transfer from the hot fluid has increased and the reason it's increased is because the temperature of the fluid exiting the heat exchanger is now lower. So the next step to solving this then is to divide each side by 672. And I'm also going to move our unknown variable to the left hand side. So now we have T2 minus 15 equals 17737.5 divided by 672. So now we get T2 minus 15 equals 26.40 degrees. Now the final step to get T2 on its own is just to add 15 degrees to each side because at the moment our left hand side is T2 minus 15 and we want T2 on its own. Therefore adding 15 to each side we get T2 equals 41.40 degrees C. Now once again as we expected the water leaving the heat exchanger is now at a higher temperature because the rate of heat transfer has been increased. In the next tutorial we're going to look at a type of heat exchanger which uses a refrigerant and what we get in that type of heat exchanger is a change in state of the refrigerant.